my name is Yanni or Yanislav Malahov. I have some Russian roots. That's what explain my la Russian last name. My Russian is very, very basic though. And I'm going to talk about eternity today. Let's see. Eternity is also called the, the Oracle machine. Um, I'm going to explain why we have this title in a bit. First, a little bit about myself. I'm a computer science graduate from the Munich University. I have created about eight wallets in the past, one color coins wallet in 2013 to make it possible to create uh, issues or to create shares or editions of digital artwork. Um, this got done with Vitalik Buderin. This is why I also call myself the godfather of Ethereum because we had frequent chats back then and in one of these chats I came up with the idea to have updatable smart contracts or algorithms as I called them on a blockchain so that you don't need to upgrade all the network, you can just upgrade a, a contract or a certain um, value transfer on the blockchain. Then I've also created browser extension wallets, one for example for Dogecoin um, and web wallets for custom cryptocurrencies. And today I'm here as a founder of Eternity. Let's get to one of the core problems of existing blockchain technology. It's the scalability. We have about 7.4 billion people on this planet and they require lots of transactions. I'm not counting in the Internet of Things here, so this will require even a magnitude more of transactions. Mm, so currently there are so many blockchain or let's say smart contracts or app, dApp, um, projects which receive a lot of funding, but the existing blockchain technology really does not scale. It's like trying to build a YouTube in 2000. It's just too early. So we have a solution for the scalability at Eternity. We say that we have infinite transactions per second. How this works, I'm going to explain in a bit. First, a little bit also about the team. Um, I'm here as the founder. I've already introduced myself. Then there is Zach. Zach is also here, over there. Hello. <laughs> he is a, he is a very um, experienced blockchain developer. He worked previously for Augur. His first blockchain has over 300 stars on GitHub. With the, the goal to uh, for this first blockchain was to create the most basic proof of work um, blockchain. It's called Basic Coin. And yeah, then there is Zach uh, Jack Patterson. Um, we three wrote the white paper together, the Eternity white paper, and Jack is advising us on the technology. He previously worked on Scenario, another Turing-complete smart contract platform. Also, Marion is here from our team with previous experience in the Silicon Valley, as well as the blockchain community over there, and Nicola is doing business development. He is right now in Japan, together with Lior, who is our legal advisor. So, what is Eternity? Eternity is a new blockchain for scalable smart contracts interfacing with real-world data. The scalability gets solved via state channels. And what are state channels? So, state channels are trustless transactions off-chain. So, Usually, when you do a state channel transactions or even a smart contract, so you can have arbitrary um, yeah, state updates inside such a state channel, you would not write to the blockchain. And we, we strongly believe this is the only way how we can scale the technology while keeping the trustless properties as well as enhancing the privacy. So, usually, when you have a transaction inside a state channel, well, let me explain it like this. So when you open up a state channel, you put in some value, some AE tokens into the state channel. Just two counterparties are necessary. So it's you can essentially infinitely transact inside such a state channel with just limited by the speed of light. And um, yeah, usually there's no disagreement here between the counterparties. But in case there is a disagreement, or worst case, the counterparty disappears, um, you take the last signed state as well as the contract which is kind of locked in into the state channel and publish it to the blockchain and the blockchain the network enforces this smart contract and comes to the same agreement or the same conclusion as if everything was on chain from the beginning on um, this is this is a way how we yeah achieve first higher scalability as well as higher privacy even even though um, 
the so even in the case of the uh, execution of uh, the smart contract via the blockchain, then only the the part which is necessary for the execution would need to be published. So even I mean we use masked Merkleized abstract abstract syntax trees in order to achieve this. Yeah. Um, Great. So an analogy here would be um, to have to have um, or imagine imagine you have paper contracts and, and imagine you need to have a copy of every paper contract with everybody else who writes paper contracts. This this does not scale really. It's, it's totally impossible that we keep all our contracts as well as all the state which is bound to the smart contract on a single blockchain, on a single public blockchain. And this is why we call it also a crypto court blockchain. Only the enforcement gets done by the blockchain. So as a side effect also it's easier to program these smart contracts as they don't have dependencies. Only in case you declare these dependencies um, you would need to, or um, you can interact with smart contracts as well as with Oracle data. And the, the core blockchain itself becomes more simple and yeah, easier to check. Let's get to another core innovation of Eternity blockchain. It's the oracles, the decentralized oracle system which is built in. And what is an oracle? An oracle is a way how real world data can be inserted into the blockchain so that smart contracts can interact with this. Um, one thing here is to mention that this works with everything which is public and of public interest. It does not really work with things which are in between um, two parties privately. For example, it would not really work with a car of somebody to, to do insurance for a car because um, the public doesn't know really or there's no real interest in a single car. But it would definitely work with, for example, betting on the weather data or using the price of gold from an exchange which is in public to also create CFDs or synthetic assets um, using the oracles. Prediction markets are another really nice application which we want to build on top of Eternity and also they become part of the governance system. So let's get to the next innovation here of Eternity, the consensus and the governance. Um, and the core question here is how do we make the correct decisions together in such a decentralized system which is yeah, all over the internet and highly decentralized. So the consensus is proof of work. We still use a very innovative proof of work algorithm which, is, um, which enables people to mine with their smartphones. So with Bitcoin, we have seen that the hardware got optimized for the software, for the SHA-256 SHA um, hashing algorithm. And with Eternity, or with the cuckoo cycle from, from John Trump, who is also our advisor, um, we uh, essentially do exactly the other way around. We optimize the mining algorithm, which is not anymore hashing, it's a graph algorithm, in order to fits perfectly to standard hardware which already everybody has in their pockets as well as at home. And this way we want to be the most decentralized blockchain in existence. The, con the, the governance um, mechanism is, as I said, is based on prediction markets. So instead of voting, you would bet, you would put um, money where your mouth is and you would essentially come to I mean, all the information from the world gets distilled to a single number between zero and one, which will determine the likelihood that a certain parameter, for example, the, the block size or the price of certain opcodes, so the, the price of uh, execution of smart contracts, is um, yeah, determined in a correct way. So it, we have seen with Ethereum that several hard forks were necessary in order to update the price of the opcodes and with the block size, for example, in Bitcoin, the debate is going now on for, I think, three or four years. It's, it's not necessary to keep these things hard-coded. We can use the governance mechanism, we can use betting or prediction markets in order to achieve um, here the correct decision, which is beneficial for the future development of the blockchain, which is also beneficial for the 
a value of the system and of the tokens. So this is a little preview of the website. We will relaunch in the next couple of hours. It's it features a phone, and this is also showing our approach here. We we want to uh, have also a, a unified user experience via um, app store or uh, app space, as we call it, and people will be able to integrate useful blockchain apps into this app store model and. Yeah, we will also provide, for example, design guidelines so that it's not such a mess with all these different uh, crypto apps on top of uh, the, the, the different blockchains. So we, we, we try a holistic approach. It's still modular and it fits together. And um, yeah, you can also read our white paper on the website and there's also further information. The roadmap, um, we have started with the development already earlier than what's written here on this page. So we have a testnet already live. The launch was successful of the testnet and we will have a backing campaign or a contribution campaign starting on the 31st of March. So just in two weeks of now where we will pre-sell some tokens from this new blockchain which will launch in Q1 2018. So we think we are further developed than Ethereum when they did their backing campaign. The security audit is absolutely necessary before the mainnet launch. We plan to have it for about two or three months going on to get rid of all the bugs and security issues which might happen with such a new technology. So yeah, you can, you can download the testnet on GitHub, you can um, compile it, you need to have at least basic developer knowledge so there's no user interface. It's for the brave, as I say, and you can mine and you can use state channels. The oracles will be built as the next step. And we have also started deploying wallets for AE pre-tokens, for example, for our Berlin Hackathon, where we gave away about 80 paper wallets to 80 lawyers. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you're invited to join us. We are active in more than 10 communities, for example, Facebook, Twitter, QQ, WeChat, and Slack and Gitter, Facebook, um, I think it's facebook.com eternity project. Which I will write this later, <laughs> thanks. Um, and a few more words about the contribution campaign. It's done by a Liechtenstein company. We have registered this, we have also the regulatory approval, we are in direct touch with the regulators as well as the government. And we will also create a non-profit foundation, it's in the process of creation, um, for um, yeah, supporting open source development and the community and events and stuff like this. On the 31st of March will be the launch of the campaign. It will be an IC20 token on Ethereum. So you should get some Ether if you want to get some AE tokens. But we will also integrate with Shapeshift which makes it easy also to um, fund this Ether wallet with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And for people who have lots of fiat, we have a partner, Bitcoin Swiss, who will uh, process the fiat payments and do KYC AML. And yeah, for the 31st of March, there will be also an early bird discount. Um, yep, yeah, this is a quote of Steve Jobs, with which I would like to end my quote with, uh, talk with, talk with I'm an optimist in the sense that I believe humans are noble and honorable, and some of them are really smart. I have a very optimistic view of individuals. So why does this fit to blockchain technology? So he's talking about giving tools to the people to empower them, to, to empower the individual. And I think this is exactly what blockchain or crypto technology is also standing for. So even though that Steve Jobs probably did not know anything about blockchain, it's... <laughs> It's a very similar philosophy, what we're having here. Uh, we, we give tools to people to be fully sovereign over their identity, over their finances, over their documents, and over their contracts. And yeah, I would like to thank you for listening to this talk. <laughs>